now? Yay. Now we're all awake. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Michelle Fountain, and this is Peggy Boylan, and we are co-advisors for the class of 2019. On behalf of the class, we want to welcome parents, family, friends, the class of 1969, our superintendent, Mary Beth Banyos, board members, and faculty as we celebrate these graduates. I have often thought of classes as forming a kind of collective personality. Some classes are known for their altruism as they conduct volunteer events and raise money for causes close to their hearts. Some are known as organizers, putting on dances and events and doing a great job at raising money for their class. Others are known for their athleticism and outgoing natures as they bring home trophies and prizes on the field and on the stage. Some are known primarily for their academics, jumping to the highest bar this high school has to offer and beyond. The class of 2019 has students in each of these categories and many that overlap, yet they, devi they defy collective labels. Some are state champion athletes. Many are top scholars. Several are consummate volunteers. A good number are talented artists, musicians, and actors. A number are talented builders, mechanics, and environmentalists. Most, however, are not great salespeople. Fundraising was a real struggle for this class, but things change, and that may have been because they were so busy doing all of those other things. They are boisterous. During their freshman and sophomore class meetings, we sometimes required an extra teacher to act as a bouncer to help keep the order. However, they did mature over time, although they will never be accused of being too quiet or not sharing their opinions. What the class of 2019 really is, is a collection of unique individuals. Individuals who care about the environment, each other, their school, their communities, and their world. They showed this in last year's walkout for victims of gun violence by protesting against climate change and by helping out at Zach's Place dances, among many other things. They are also forward thinkers who are showing support for their school in a unique way through their class gift. The class of 2019 is leaving this school behind but thinking of its future as they make what might be the very first gift to the building fund for a new school. They hope their small $1,000 gift will plant a seed that will grow with the support of many others in our communities so that someday in the not too distant future, they can come back to visit a modern energy efficient building that connects to this beautiful landscape with an abundance of natural light and flexible spaces to support and enhance the learning of the future. Class of 2019, you have so much to be proud of, and we are all very proud of you. Congratulations. And now I would like to introduce Principal Garen Smale, who will introduce the class of 1969. Well, good evening. Um, so Woodstock Union High School, or excuse me, Woodstock High School was founded in 1854. And we're proud of our rich and deep histories of Vermont High School. And in honoring this history, it is our tradition to recognize uh, the graduating class of the 50th anniversary as part of our commencement ceremony. So please join me in welcoming Nancy Campbell, who is the salutatorian of the class of 1969 from Woodstock Union High School. Nancy. Good 
Nancy will read the names of her classmates who are with us tonight. Jackie Adams Tarleton, Corinne Aldrich Barr, Marilyn Atwood Bradshaw, Truman Bates, Sheila Baland Schweitzer, Robert Daly, Mark Damon, Susan Fuller, Marlene Gramling Katz, Wayne Hoisington, Colin McDonald, John McDonald, Oren Mills, Donald Oakland, Timothy Severance, Elaine Tarleton Grant, Deborah Van Alstein Hewitt, Donald Ware. Thank you. Now, members of the class of 2019, Evan Alsop, or Atsbury, come join me, please. Claire Coates, Claudia Mills, Dharma Neal, Sydney Pilot, and Lily Walker Money will recite the Woodstock alma mater. Alma mater. Our strong bonds can never be broken. Formed in Woodstock High. Far surpassing wealth, unspoken, unspoken, sealed by friendship's tie. Alma, alma mater, alma mater, deep graven on each heart, shall be found unwavering true, till we from life shall part. Alma mater, alma mater. And thank you, class of 1969. I know you have work to do on your float for the parade, so you are dismissed. Thank you. I would like to introduce Anna Hepler and Madeline Hiller, our co-salutatorians. Congratulations to the class of 2019. Thank you for joining us tonight as we celebrate disembarking the wild ride known as high school. Thank you to our families for taking care of and supporting us since day one. And thank you to the faculty and staff for guiding and preparing us over the past four years for this moment and beyond. Without all of you, we truly would not be sitting here anxiously anticipating our graduation today. As we begin the next chapters of our lives, we step foot onto our own individual paths, ready to take on the mountain of life. Although we may come across forks in the trail, steep slopes, and unexpected detours, we all have a compass. Yes, we each hopefully have a literal compass, but the true navigator is our moral compass. The different trails we choose will teach us what we value most, honesty, trust, ambition, loyalty, love, empathy, you name it. Like the swing of a compass point, these traits will rise to the top in some occasions and fall by the sidelines in others. But high school has been a time to test where our principles lie. Throughout our high school careers, we have been able to learn from, shift, and develop our unique values, changing the directions our moral compasses will lead us. As individuals, we may have some shared and some different qualities on our dials, but one similarity is that our high school years have undoubtedly allowed us to test a number of those values, confirming some and discounting others. To test your moral compass, ask yourself, who am I? I am a young woman who loves her family more than anything in the world, who cares about the well-being of others, and who does not sugarcoat even the toughest of reality. 
I'm a young woman who worked hard for success, who is supportive of her friends and her competition, and who does not take things for granted. I am quirky, fun-loving, sensitive, courageous. I'm a young woman who has finally grown out of trying to be perfect and has welcomed herself with open arms. Class of 2019, as you are asking yourself, who am I? Take time to remember that not everyone's compasses will align. We will come across people in the community, in the workplace, or in personal settings with whom we do not share directives. Yet disagreement with or disapproval of another does not grant us the liberty to close ourselves off. Practice open-mindedness. Let your compass dial spin to include, to accept all kinds of people, all kinds of orientations. One of the most influential parts of the hike of life is the trailhead, where the journey begins. Although some of us are eager to move on and explore other areas of the world, and fortunately, some intend to stay, we must all be grateful for where we come from. Vermont is a special place to grow up, surrounded by nature, the playground for stargazing, rope swinging, canoeing, skiing, snowmobiling, and sometimes just good old fashioned playing in the woods. We eat locally grown fresh foods and devour real maple syrup. We go to community gatherings, performances, and markets. Not everyone is privileged to say they live right down the road from their family, have known their neighbors their entire lives, and have grown up and are now graduating high school with the same close-knit group of friends they have known since preschool. I know there are exciting opportunities ahead, but the foundation for our success comes down to where and how we are raised. So please don't forget our beautiful upbringing, our trailhead, Vermont. So, my fellow graduates, who are we? We are a rambunctious group of teenagers, excuse me, of young adults, who were once known as that class, but for the most part have grown up since then. We are crazy, enthusiastic, eclectic, dynamic, and unique. We are curious scientists, brilliant math whizzes, detailed writers, creative artists, and musicians. We are determined athletes, state champions, and spirited supporters. We are talented actors, passionate activists, and stewards to our community. We are the Woodstock class of 2019, and we are the future. Thank you. <laughs> now, I am honored to introduce my good friend and co-salutatorian, Anna Hepler. Thank you, Madeline. And thank you again to all of our incredible teachers, family, and friends who, is, who have helped us to arrive at this moment. I believe in the power of small moments. Every person on this earth dreams at some point of changing the world in a big way. Who among us here today has not dreamt at least once of seeing their face on television or in a newspaper or across the internet? We see celebrities donating thousands, millions of dollars to charities and environmental organizations, and we think, hey, what if that were me someday? But not everyone can become famous, and less than 1% of the global population possesses over a million dollars. So what about the rest of us? Do we sit back in our seats and watch the rich and famous make change? No. We live in the small moments. We cheer for our teammates, we call out the bullies, we hold, hold open the door a few seconds longer so the next kid can make it through. Because I believe that each of these small acts, even if it lasts no longer than a few seconds, can have a great impact on the recipient of such kindness. And more often than not, the impact caused by positive interactions has a ripple effect. I have been on Woodstock's varsity track team for all four years of my high school career. The team has always been a supportive and generally positive group. We've had our ups and downs, but hey, it's high school. Um, but one environment where the power of the small moments truly shines is during competition. A track meet is a long event, like an all day long kind of event in many cases. And unlike many other sports events, everyone competes at a different time and usually as an individual. So what does the rest of the team do for those six, seven, eight hour days? We watch and we cheer. We make sure that our teammates know that we are invested in their success and we give them encouragement and incentive to push forward, to run, jump, throw, vault, faster or further than ever before. It isn't terribly difficult to stand at a metal fence and shout the names of my teammates. 
But when I'm on the receiving end of the cheering, I have felt firsthand the powerful push it provides. I have smiled through the pain of the last lap of the 1500 meter run, even as my legs and lungs protested because there on the sideline was my team telling me to go get that girl in front. That's a small moment. All they had to do was call my name, offer a few simple words of encouragement. It helped. Even the simplest words can help, no matter how much or how little is at stake. As we leave this place today, let us not forget to offer words of encouragement to friends and new acquaintances alike. Let us be vocal in our belief in others. Yet, sometimes we stumble across small moments where the right answer is not quite so easy as to cheer. Back in middle school, we talked a great deal about bullying, about the ways in which people are involved in bullying. We learned about victims, aggressors, and bystanders. We cannot be bystanders. One of the simplest concepts and yet hardest moments to actually bring to fruition is the process of calling out the cruelty, accidental or otherwise, of our peers. Too often as young people we partake in casual humor about gender, race, disability, and we think nothing of the cruel or humiliating consequence. Too often we watch and listen and think to ourselves, should we be saying this stuff? In that small moment where we have to ask ourselves about the actions of those around us, let us choose to take the process one step further. Let us ask not only ourselves, but also our friends, is this right? Let us be conscious of the impact of our words and let us not be afraid to speak up. There are so many ways to make change. Class of 2019, if you find yourself able to make big changes, do it. Create, explore, research, and if you do someday find yourself on TV, by all means, use your platform in an impactful way. But no matter where we go, what we do, we must not neglect to advocate for the success and well-being of our fellow human beings. Because in order to make big change, we must start with the small. In the words of poet, writer, and activist Maya Angelou, you de de develop courage by doing courageous things, small things, but things that cost you some exertion, mental and, I suppose, spiritual exertion. So let us be courageous, let us be conscientious, and let us live every day that knowing that this small moment, the here and now, is an opportunity to make change for good. Thank you. Now is one of my favorite parts of the program, the speak chorus. So I'd like to invite the following students up on stage. Zachary Cannon, Anna Hepler, Julia Kowalski, Teddy Krawchuk, and Olivia Sals. They will be sharing Walking Forward in That Light. <laughs> Walking, Walking forward, forward in, in that, that light. light, a speak chorus for the 2019 graduates of Woodstock Union High School, with words from Elizabeth Alexander, Bill McKibben, Alexis Rockman and Katie Gasto, Jessica Lang, J.K. Rowling, Robert Corrigan, Lemuse, our mission statement, our faculty and staff, our students. Each day we go about our business. Walking past each other. Catching each other's eyes. Or not. About to speak or speaking. All about us is noise. All about us is noise and bramble. Thorn and din. Each one of our ancestors on our tongue. We encounter each other in words. Words. Spiny or smooth. Whisper to declaim. Words to consider. Reconsider. We cross dirt roads and highways that mark the will of someone and then others who said, I need to see what's on the other side. I know there's something better down the road. We need to find a place where we are safe. We walk into that which we cannot yet see. We, we are a diverse, diverse community committed to the discovery of promise in each of us and dedicated to the full development of intellect, curiosity, energy, and conscience. We consciously commit ourselves to challenge and expand the limits of thought, tolerance, and performance. As does Madeline Hiller, a wise young woman who is both down to earth and forward looking, a student council treasure, getting things done and thinking ahead, driven, talented, deserving of her achievements, with the wickedest dry wit around, environmental champion. 
Angelina Amadeo. Amadeo organized food sorting days for the Woodstock food shelf. Amazing Spanish student. Her handwriting should be a font. That gets named after her. Jed, Jed Asbury. Asbury. Kind-hearted. Compassionate towards others. Hard worker. Leader. And captain. Yasra Miles. Miles. Absolutely everyone knows and looks up to Yabi. Excellent person. With just the right tune for the moment. Always ready to wrap up with a smile. And a thank you. Dedicated to his family. Emilio, Emilio Montano. Montano. Responsible and loyal. Super smart. And kind. Doesn't say a lot. But the words he does say are important. And meaningful. Darma Neal. The biggest heart. Always looking to help. Number one advocate for special needs. Brings in delicious to bake treats for special occasions. Ran the Zacks Plays Halloween dance. A future teacher. Ben, ben Blanchard. Blanchard. Eagle Scout. Computer intern. Enlisted in the Navy. Got trees. Perennial smile. Two ears and one mouth. Listens before speaking. And takes his time to hear you out. Giving free smiles for everyone, Matt, Matt Carlson. Carlson is a leader by example and brings out the happy in teachers and friends alike. Strong and steady. Received the Maynard Mayville Award in Culinary Arts from the Hartford Area Career Technology Center. H-A-C-T-C. -C. Yanni Carlson grew into a linebacker. And don't mess. Tim, Tim Rogers. Rogers is learning French so he can understand a particular blacksmithing technique. Very kind to all. A true Renaissance man. He can make anything. Watch for future patents. Tierney Dugan, one of the most well-rounded, yet modest, scientists we know, Calc whiz. despite her numerous concussions. <laughs> Isaac Emery, funny, draws realistic skeletal figures, brilliant, to make electricity with just pennies, freestyle skier, sponsored by Line, Full Tilt, and Muted Outerwear. Check his edit. Competent, practiced, and skilled, Quinn, Quinn Martin. Martin is a leader. Got machinery. H-A-C-T-C -C, student of the year in industrial welding and mechanics. Give the man a lunchbox and the world is his oyster. Jacob Maxim, Maxim, Eagle Scout. The road is straight ahead. And quantifiable. Knows his value. And lives them every day. What an example. Momo Bealy. Research scientist at large. Always dancing. Rap writing. Movie making. Verbose. Meme loving. Anti-bullying. Student athlete. That we should keep our eye on. Loves neurology. Install the peace swing. Always positive. Each day we go about our business. Walking past each other. Catching each other's eyes or not. About to speak or speaking. We encounter each other in word, words. Be present. Be present and open to the moment. That is unfolding before you. Because ultimately, your life is made up of moments. So don't miss them by being lost in the past. Or anticipating the future. We, we consciously, consciously commit, commit ourselves, ourselves to stop. stop. To be in the present. To support and engage each person's unique gifts. Mentoring at Hartford Tech, Evan also is quiet and kind. Race carpool driver. Played football for the first time. As a senior. Charlie Amato. Kind to his friends. Witty personality. Confident on and off the field. Katie McMaster. Getting her EMT certification. Super nice person. Wise beyond her years. And reliable. Doodles dinosaurs. Smiling. Always. Gabe Marsakovateri. Good sense of humor. Calm. And steady. A gentle giant. Aura Asbury, funny, witty, and dedicated to all things WUHS. Hard worker, leader, and captain. Outstanding student of the year in natural resources at HACTC. Bridget Black. Sweet and friendly. From pom-poms to cartoons. The best sock collection ever. Always looking for the best in others. Oh, you like anime? Kara Bertel. Spunky person. With a great sense of humor. Not afraid to test the limits. A proud co-parent of Bert. Toby Borzakowski. Kind, gentle soul. Our big forensics winner. Senior class president. Future U.S. president. Loves politics. Alec Payton. Never at a loss for words. Fantastic smile. A curator of character. Who will go out of his way to introduce himself. Ava Pawalza. Sharp-witted. As quick with a blade. Fencing. As she is with her wits. Loves to debate politics. And relishes having the contrary view. Haley Bean. Quiet. With a strong voice. Outstanding student of the year in building trades from HACTC. Sydney Pilot, compassionate and fun, quick to laugh, cutting edge of fashion, unfailingly polite. Kyron Celia Dang, always pleasant and helpful in his job at Farmers. Good at graffiti, snowboarding, and skateboarding. A little bit of California in Vermont. King of the bag lunch, Max Dodson, asks amazing questions. Followed by unique catchphrases. Is swag nasty. And definitely cash money. Kyle Gordon Wiley, unflappable, witty, has to duck to fit through doors. You'll find him in the weight room. Natalie Strayton, Baker extraordinaire, so intelligent, a tutor, helper, very organized, quietly mature beyond her years, Taryn Stone, a car guy, with a big, big heart, heart who is determined, down to earth, and a hard worker, undercover mathematician. In November, 
Students traveled to the Hall Art Foundation in Reading, Vermont to see the exhibit Solace of Amnesia. Curated by Alexis Rockman and Catherine Gastow. Who defined the solace of amnesia. As a craving to forget. As a form of comfort and self-medication. Recognizing that the planet is in an age of profound environmental transformation. We find ourselves estranged and alienated from the ecosystems in which we evolve. How do we reconcile our knowledge of what is happening? Our behavior. And political policies. That undermine our best interests. And our future. Continued loss of bio and ecophilia has become something we deny as we grow more acutely melancholic in this time of open political hostility to the realities of climate change. The intergenerational problem we are causing now will change the world in ways we can't imagine. Yet, as author, environmentalist, and activist Bill McKibben has said, there is a tendency at every important but difficult crossroad to pretend it's not really there. We, we consciously, consciously commit, commit ourselves, ourselves to be aware. To inspire and honor the act of stewardship of family, community, nation, and globe. Oliver Wilson sees the whole picture and is a great student council member. He's a doer, one of the nicest students in our school. He knows who he is. Always has a good comeback. A change the world can. Pure environmental activist. Morgan Bernthal. Resilient. Great sense of humor. Mature person. Who knows herself. Felt transformed by the school trip to Africa. Touched by what she saw and experienced. Claire Coates. A change the world kid. Great student council contributor. Representing her peers. A versatile athlete. Incredibly generous with her time and energy. A ray of sunshine. Loyal to family. Harrison News. Is a kind person. Willing to put in the work. Bear! Wade Hershebuehl. Excellent traveler to Puerto Rico. Quiet and deep. 100 day skier. Molly Thompson. So witty. Will be remembered for her story slams. And dry humor. The F-bomb. Loves her family and dogs. Stands up for what she believes in. Queen Supreme, who is an unbelievable linguist. Clarissa Pratt. Budding hairstylist. Spreading her wings and learning to fly. Wonderful smile. Supportive friend. Logan Crane. Loves plants. And grafting roses. Excellent at sketching. High jumper extraordinaire. Linnea K. Quiet, but powerful. Beautiful singing voice. And thoughtful artist. Younger than I am. And, and don't, don't we just, just love that? Dana Castro. Energetic. Lively. Caring. Grateful. Mi hija de Colombia, Señor Brista nunca te olvidara. Amigo con todos en la escuela. With great leadership in Spain. Will Crompton. Kept up everyone's spirits. After a 14-hour bus ride. Insane dance. Reigning Mr. WUHS. He brings energy and humor into any situation. Micah Schlebach. Great personality. And kind to his peers. Excellent athlete. A friend to everyone. Well informed about environmental issues. Caden White. Very smart, personable, football star. Always knows what he's doing. Headed for the Coast Guard. Catherine Sawyer. Sweet and kind. Always has a smile. Loves her puggle. Passionate about working in the medical field. HACTC Outstanding Student of the Year in Health Sciences. Makes delicious cupcakes. Cassie Hill. Loves the outdoor life. And animals. Incredible throwing art. Very kind. With a great sense. Josh Dufield. Loyal. Dedicated. Honest day's work. Steady steps into the future. With steel-toed boots. The world is a better place with friends. And a trusty tape measure. Genuinely sincere. Alexa Sukanakis Is a kind soul. WUHS Greek goddess. Offered a support group for peers at artistry. Empathetic and resilient. J.K. Rowling says, We do not need magic to change the world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. We are a diverse community committed to the discovery of promise in each of us and dedicated to the full development of intellect, curiosity, energy, and conscience. We consciously commit ourselves to develop and empower the mind, body, and spirit. An artistic soul, Rhiannon Vegan, Vegan, is a fixer extraordinaire, Vermonter to the core, fabulous writer and scholar, ready to bite the head off the frog. Alex Reed, what an artist, an insightful person, responsible, upstanding, and caring. An amazing actor and singer, Zach Cannon, fills the stage with his charisma, is super creative, and dedicated to work in the innovation lab, like shoes. Savannah, Savannah Carr is organized, book savvy, a natural learner, and powerful, embracing her passion for art. Min Purvis, soccer star, interning with Ken Burns, soccer, passionate in his pursuits, soccer, Elm Instagram, soccer. <laughs> Julia Kowalski has a brilliant mind, creative soul, and great energy and presence on the stage. Very kind. An interesting person who always has something to say. Catherine, Catherine Battle is an actress who stole the show. A creative person who surveys the energy in herself and others around her. Loves fancy clothing, headbands, and shoes. Olivia Sauls, art maven and chemistry lover. Ambassador of what's right. Never fails of a laugh. Theater talent on and off stage. 
the best dancer ever, Lily, Lily Walker Money, is always positive. I'm reaching out to help others. Most congenial, hardworking, and dedicated. Keep your eye on that prize. A Dare O'Neill. Excellent artist. And compassionate person. Ready to put in the work. Those amazing sneakers. Incredibly talented and optimistic. Anna Hepper is a true leader with a quiet demeanor. Master paper snowflake crafter. A talented singer. Who can harmonize beautifully. Dependable student council president. Four time Vermont Young Playwrights Contest winner. Hartley Coates. Incredible actor. With the willingness to step out and become transformed on the stage. With unmatched energy. The best doodles. And the best laugh. Mackenzie Bealy, fabulously fashionable. Study natural dyeing and sewing this year. Hashtag war instigator. Hashtag Dr. G wins. Self-declared prom dictator. Who did an incredible job. Ray McFarland. Tri-Witch. Incredibly talented artist. Inspired by early 20th century cartoons. Passionate in all pursuits. Ted Crochet. 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 Amazing actor. Singer. Improv artist. Performer. Always learning his comedic chops, even in the middle of chemistry class. An unusual conversationalist. Ben Marsikovateri. Good sense of humor. Dedicated to athletics. Football star. Claudia, Claudia Mills. Mills. Created an amazing study of Shakespeare this year. Moving to England for uni. Got up at the crack of dawn to row for a great linguist. A talented skier and artist, Chloe Noble, is a super nice friend to all. Contagiously effervescent. Math whiz. State champion tennis player. Peter Borden, a big skier, almost unbearably clever, former class officer who has a constant smile, or is it a sly grin, Instagram model, Gina Sorrentino, reserved, but quick to smile, passionate about fitness, excellent runner, with a fiery maneuver, a runner and a gentleman, Matt Ennis, always has a great attitude, and is ready for life beyond high school, the red M&M in &M a bowl full of green M&Ms, always dressed to the nines, and everyone owes him money. Matt Frizzell, Frizzell, the Frizz, focused, team player, always in the gym playing basketball, or football, loves his football team, the Jacksonville Jaguars, Addie Gray, Gray, resilient, tough, and strong, captain of varsity hockey team, and lacrosse, <laughs> Anthony Hendrick, varsity slugger, best mid collection, values family and friends, genuinely kind, with a great beard, Lucas Bacconi, the commander, co-captain of the championship hockey team, very sharp, you cannot get anything past him. The other co-captain of the championship hockey team, Eli Chinaman, is the next Mr. Hires, and thoughtful, insightful, deep thinker, giving, and won the HACTC award for industrial mechanics. We encounter each other in words, 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 words. to consider, and reconsider. Our, Our democracy depends on the readiness of each new generation to take personal responsibility for the maintenance of the value system that characterizes our nation to become agents of change in society not merely resisting unjust structures and arrangements but actively undertaking to reform them to become a force for good in a nation that is increasingly insensitive to the needs of the less fortunate we have choices, real choices. We can be angry, Despondent, selfish, uncaring, even greedy, and only focus on our own welfare. Or we can take on this civic challenge eagerly and use all that we have learned to address the great needs of our local community, our state, this nation, and the world. We need to see what's on the other side. We walk into that which we cannot yet see. We know there's something better down the road. In today's sharp sparkle, anything can be made. Any sentence begun. On the brink. On the brim. On the cusp. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle around to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we cry. It is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in. Oh, in this great turning we shall learn to 
ones who circle round to tend these fires. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change, the life from deep within the earth. It is time now, it is time now that we thrive, it is time we lead ourselves into the well. It is time now, and what a time to be alive in this great turning we shall learn to lead in love. In this great turning we shall learn to lead in Thank you, Speak Chorus. That was incredible. Now it is my pleasure to introduce the valedictorian of the class of 2019, Morgan Momo Bealy. Welcome to my fellow students, faculty, administration, family and friends to the commencement of the Woodstock Union High School Class of 2019. Class of 2019, congratulations on completing a successful four years of high school. I've truly loved every moment I've gotten to spend with you. Actually, over the course of these beloved shared moments together, I couldn't help but notice a reoccurrence in the high school experience. The repetition, if not belaborment, of the simple, albeit profound phrase, use your brain. Whether to suggest better judgment or apply your knowledge in class, the phrase has seemingly infinite applications, since high school is designed for applying your brain to learn about yourself and the world around you. Now, I'm a devout rule follower. So I took this advice to use my brain as literally and as fully as I could, deciding I would dedicate my entire life to use my brain to discover how others use their brains. You may be thinking, huh, the teacher's pet superlative makes perfect sense. And really, I couldn't agree more. I lived and breathed the use your brain teacher suggested, so naturally, now I live and breathe everything neuroscience. Inevitably, this rule following has evolved as an extreme curiosity about how one can use their brain, and it turns out our brain circuits are an excellent analogy to explain how we live our lives. The brain is composed of 100 billion neurons and many more glial cells. The neurons are the cells that allow for our thoughts, our judgments, our personalities, and give us that sense of identity we have been creating in these halls. Neurons are able to perform tasks by sending signals to each other in a circuit, and glial cells are their support system. Therefore, the neurons need each other and the glial cells to achieve any common goal. So allow me to create the comparison here. Woodstock Union High School has been our circuit of neurons. We have built a community here that relies on one another to function and perform tasks. With each student a neuron, we communicate or send signals to each other to complete a common goal from sports championships and past courses all the way to the beloved green sheets and going to the right location for class meetings. Now, to further develop the analogy, these neurons connect using branches called dendrites and axons, just as each one of us has reached out to one another to connect. While this connecting and achieving of common goals has occasionally been difficult, We've had mentors, our teachers, to drive our efforts along the way. Thus, our teachers are like what is called the myelin sheath, a protective coating to the neurons that allows them to pass signals more effectively. Our families are therefore those glial cells that provide the opportunity for the myelin sheath to coat the axons as they provide us with our educations, 
supporting us and nurturing our signals to be sent more effectively. This, this is how we use our brains. Each day we use our brains, we are neurons connecting with the help of glia and myelin to get each job done. For most of us, this complex circuit was created in just the seventh grade, but expanded and adapted with each year and the addition of new neurons. There is a process known as long-term potentiation that tells neuroscientists that a more a circuit operates, the better it becomes. So with each green, white, and Monday schedule, from year to year, our circuit got better. They just laughed at Monday schedule, that's so good. <laughs> our circuit got better and we became more connected. The signals would pass faster and this makes the circuit become a more permanent part of the brain. We became a routine like a kind of muscle memory for the brain, with each day joining together at school, connecting, and sending out signals. So four or six years later, this school has become a rather concrete part of our brains as we've become closer and allowed for our signals to pass faster and stronger. This school is embedded in what we know, and this circuit will always be an integral part of who we are. There's actually a cute little saying used to teach this idea of neural circuits connecting and strengthening that states, neurons that fire together, wire together. As mentioned, we have clearly wired together because we're a family, a community, and frankly, Woodstock feels like a home. It's my happy place. However, come next year, next month, or even after tomorrow, we will be neurons firing and wiring with a whole new group finding new communities or happy places. Consequently, each one of us has an infinite amount of possible new circuits that can be made. Every single possible new circuit will come from our choices, and there is great unlimited potential in what we will become, what we will do, and where it will take us. Circuits in the brain create the feeling of love, the ability of judgment, storing memories, or making balance, so you can go into the world and spread signals for love, kindness, knowledge, or peace, and you can go into the world and find a community of neurons that helps you send those signals well. I have no doubt each of you will be embedded in a wonderful new circuit, although it will be challenging at first. Just like I said before, when I was kind of neuroscience term dropping, the more a circuit operates, the better it gets. But we already know that. Just in seventh grade, we were learning how to create a Google Doc. In ninth, how to get a library pass. Just the beginning of this year, how to exercise our senior privileges, and even just this week, how to walk to a beat with the hesitation step. Now look at us, we were strutting our stuff out here. So, we will connect, our neurons will fire, your new circuit will wire, and we will all adjust in a way that we find circuits that allow us to make the world and the brain a better place if we try. Not to mention, your glia or family will always be there to support you, and your myelin teachers and mentors will always want to help you pass your signals more efficiently. And, even if we find ourselves belonging in circuits far, far away, we must always remember that, class of 2019, we're neurons to the same brain, and we can always rewire and reconnect again. What is special about our connections formed here as students and the connections neurons make is because they have so much brimming potential, so much plasticity, they're all also extremely multidimensional. We can and will be able to signal each other again, no matter how much time goes by. Just as our brain lets us ride a bike even after a long, long, long Vermont winter of not practicing that circuit, while well, we also make our new circuits. Most of you should know by now, especially if you groan at the first note of a lip sync battle performance, that I've watched High School Musical far too many times to present the idea of being one dimensional. You know I didn't learn every word to stick to the status quo to express that you should do just that, only be one thing, one neuron involved in one function. In fact, I want to remind you as I describe all of these different circuits that you can and should be creating new circuits all within your own brain every day and expanding your horizons to discover whatever new passion you wish. I recently watched Jim Halpert's, or John Krasinski's to some, commencement speech given at Brown for a little inspiration. 
and he drove the point to always follow your passions. I believe we can fire in the circuits of our dreams and still fire together. In terms of High School Musical again, once a wildcat, always a wildcat, if you will. And seeing as now I've dropped two High School Musical references, one office, and far too many neuroscience facts in this speech, it appears that I've met my goals. Uh, people placing bets about my covered topics should pay up. And that will be my cue to conclude. However, class of 2019, I need your help for this part. This is so cheesy, you're gonna love it. <laughs> so, today may mark the final time our circuit signals completely together. This may be the last time we are all connected as neurons, as a community. And we function only if we signal all together. So I have a request. Class of 2019, will all of you hold hands with the people next to you, please? For effect? Now I've been talking about how this was gonna make me cry for so long, and I promise this isn't just to make other people cry, so I'm not the sole person who cries at graduation. All right, are you guys doing it? Good, oh, I love that. All right, look around all of you, class of 2019. This right here is the completely connected circuit that got us here today. And this circuit right now will forever be embedded in my brain, even if it won't be my circuit forever. Oh, here it comes. No, I'm holding it in. All right. <sighs> I'd like to thank you all for wiring together these past years and for wiring with me. I know I love this circuit, but I do love the prospects of the circuits for all of us ahead. Congratulations again, class of 2019, on successfully connecting our neural circuit and for graduating today. It is time to go forth and wire away, and I really can't emphasize this enough. Please always use your brains. Thank you. Thanks, Momo. That was wonderful. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce the senior members of the symphonic band forming Wake Me Up Without You.
I'm pausing because these kids wear a lot of different hats. And I'm about to introduce our senior class president, Toby Borisikowski, but he needs a minute probably to breathe after playing. <laughs> senior class president, Toby Borisikowski. That's a transition. <laughs> Good evening, parents, teachers, students, and my fellow graduates. In preparation for this speech, I racked my brain, trying to come up with something, anything that I could impart upon you all today and make it worth your time. I watched countless speeches on YouTube, thinking about how to be captivating and unique. I mean, how could I possibly beat a video that's literally titled Best Graduation Speech Ever? <laughs> well, to be honest, that speech wasn't even that great. But I still didn't know what I could say that would be at all useful. I've noticed this year that in all the essays I write, there seems to be a theme. I guess it's just what's on my mind recently, and it shows up in everything I do. That theme is listening. As a little kid, I was something of a blurter, you know, someone who blurts. I just had a lot of thoughts in my head and I would say them as soon as they came to mind. This caused some problems, for obvious reasons, and so my parents would advise me to think before I spoke. I struggled for a while to understand this, because to me, the two actions were so intertwined. What good is an unvoiced thought? But I began to realize that this admonition wasn't just to save me from embarrassment, but others too. By pondering a thought before expressing it, I had more time to see the implications of what I was about to say. Spoiler alert, I'm about to use one of the cliches of graduation speeches in which I address the, address the dangers of our interconnected world. Side note, another cliche of graduation speeches is referring to valid points as cliche. Anyway. In our social media oriented society, our world is becoming increasingly stream of consciousness. I get it. With these newfangled cellular devices, it's easy to confuse your notepad with Twitter. And, the, uh, sorry. and these platforms allow us to blurt louder and farther than ever before. But I think there is something valuable in thinking about your words and actions. By pausing to explore the repercussions of what you're about to do, you give yourself an opportunity to consider the full soapstone of AP Lang fame. Thanks, Mr. Reed. You think about your audience. Do you really want grandma seeing this? Your purpose. Why are you talking about congressional politics at 3 a.m.? Your tone and more. The point is, what you do and say matters. Now, if you're anything like me, you're trying to see where this is all going and you're hung up on how it connects to listening and why is that even important anyway? Don't worry, I'll get there. But right now, I want to tell you a story. Last summer, I met a man named Andrew Forsterfell, who had written a book called Walking to Listen. In it, he details the trip he made across the country on foot. He relied on the generosity of strangers to feed and shelter him, and in exchange, he listened to their stories. It's an amazing true story, and he was a deeply spiritual and emotional man. But the anecdote that stuck with me the most was one where a man called out from his porch as Andrew walked through the suburbs of New Orleans. It was the kind of man he was not keen to approach, but listening was his mission and this time it had literally called him. So he sat down with the man who ranted and raved, spewing all kinds of hate, racist, sexist, homophobic. Andrew sat there wishing he hadn't stopped until this man mentioned his late son. And Andrew had this moment of revelation because he had found a glimmer of humanity within this man's hate. The moral of the story is that listening is the only way to understand someone else's humanity. Hearing where they come from, what they need to tell you, is part of how we define our own lives. The greatest gift we can give a stranger is our ears. And no, I don't mean removing your actual ear Van Gogh style and gifting it to a random passerby wrapped in a bloody canvas. What I'm saying is everyone has something to say. Everyone has a story they need to tell, some more urgently than others. Sometimes it's a story bursting with joy when your heart is so full it's overflowing and you just have to share it with someone. Sometimes it's a story of immense pain and you can't possibly bear the burden of it on your own. 
But whatever the story is, it requires a listener. And often, it just so happens that the exact story that they need to tell is this exact story you need to hear. Now, I'd like to return a moment to the aforementioned interconnectedness of our modern world. Paradoxically, the trans-global communication network is bringing us farther from our neighbors. We have comment wars over Twitch with strangers halfway across the world, but we ignore those begging us for help as we pass them on the street. Our megabyte-sized intake capacity distills our stories beyond their relevance, forcing them into boxes through which our humanity cannot fit. That was a mouthful. But here's what it boils down to. Since the dawn of humanity, we have told stories. It is in our most basic and primitive nature. Stories are vital, impenetrable, and they cannot be condensed into 280 characters. When you listen, really listen to someone's story, that is the epitome of humanity. There's immense power in acknowledging, recognizing, and internalizing someone else's experience. What we are struggling with as a society is our inability to see the humanity in the other. And that is reflected in our inability to listen to those we don't agree with. In a 538 study, just 10% of marriages in America are between a Democrat and a Republican. If that doesn't prove our growing inability to listen, I don't know what does. But, for once, I don't want to talk about partisan politics. Everyone has a past. Everyone has a story to tell. And my greatest wish for this class is that you practice listening. Wherever you want your life to go, and wherever it's going, I hope that you will listen to everyone you meet and treat them all with respect. Keep an open mind and an open heart. Remember that just as your story is vital to your reality, someone else's story is equally defining and essential to their narrative. Humanity depends on humanity, so listen to those around you. Parents, teachers, students, graduates of the Woodstock Union High School class of 2019, I encourage all of you to exercise your humanity in all your endeavors, to expand your mind, and above all, to listen. Thank you and congratulations. Each year when I present the graduating class, I include a poem that I choose that, that seems to fit the personality of the group. This year I chose the poem, Your World, by Georgia Johnson. Your World, by Georgia Johnson. Your world is as big as you make it. I know, for I used to abide in the narrowest nest in the corner, my wings pressing close to my side. But I sighted the distant horizon where the skyline encircled the sea, and I throbbed a burning desire to travel this immensity. I battered the cordons around me and cradled the, my wings on the breeze, then soared to the uttermost reaches with rapture, with power, with ease. Members of the Windsor Central <clears throat> Unified District Board of Directors, we have a long name, Assembled faculty, family, and friends, it is my honor to present to you a group of, yes, young adults who are ready to encounter the immensity of our world with rapture, with power, and with ease. The class of 2019. <laughs> and now it is my pleasure, we have a group up here, our presenting group, because we'll read the name of the first graduate. You too, Miss Banos. It's a new one. <laughs> and now it is my pleasure to read the name of the first graduate to receive his diploma tonight, the 2019 class president, Toby Borzakowski.
And now I turn the podium over to Toby, and he will read the names of the rest of the graduates from his class. Here you are, Toby. Thank you, Mr. Town. Olivia Jane Sauls. William K. Crompton. Morgan Allen Bealey. Anna Grace Hapler. Madeline Elizabeth Hiller. Angelina N. Amadeo. Mackenzie West Bealey. Claire Elizabeth Coates. Tierney Julia Dugan. Linnea K. Julia Jean Kowalski. Jacob Turner Maxim. Sydney Kathleen Pilot. Natalie Eliza Strayton. Molly Elizabeth Thompson. Evan Latimer also. Charles Anthony Amato. Jedediah John Asbury. Aura James Asbury.
Haley Lee Bean. Rhiannon Sage Began. Morgan Rose Berthold. Bridget Holly Black. Benjamin Guile Blanchard. <laughs> Peter Mills Borden the Third. Kara Emily Bertel. Zachary Race Cannon. <laughs> Matthew George Carlson. Savannah Autumn Carr. Dana Valentina Castro. <laughs> Eli Michael Chanowitz. <laughs> Kyron Xavier Celia Dank. Hartley Coates. <laughs> Logan Colton Crane. <laughs> Maximilian William Dodson. Joshua Michael Dufield. <laughs> Isaac Thomas Emery. Matthew James Ennis. <laughs> Matthew Ryan Frizzell. Kyle Andrew Gordon Wiley. Yeah. 
Adriana Lynn Gray. Anthony James Hendrick. Cassandra Marguerite Hill. Wade Joseph Hirschfeld. Theodore Mott Benner Krawczyk. Barbara Kate McMaster. Benjamin Gregory Marsikovateri. Gabriel Robert Marsikovateri. Quinn E. Martin. Riley S. McFarland. Yabsara Miles. Claudia Maxine Mills. Emilio Samuel Montano. Dharma Ann Neal. Chloe Conklin Noble. Harrison Nunes. Adair M. O'Neill. Ava Mary Poelzik. <laughs> Lucas Miles Marceau Picconi. Oh, Clarissa Rose Pratt. <laughs> 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 
Min Purvis. No, no, handshake no, first, handshake first. Okay, now. <laughs> 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 Alex Key Reed. <laughs> Alex <laughs> Timothy Lee Rogers. Catherine Irene Sawyer. <laughs> Micah North Schlebach. Regina Stella Sorrentino. Terence James Stone. <laughs> Lily Ruth Walker Money. Caden <laughs> Taylor White. Oliver Elliot Wilson. Catherine Battle. And now to declare our graduation, I'd like to introduce our superintendent, Mary Beth Banyos. Good evening. I just recently finished a book entitled The Power of Moments by Chip and Dan Heath. In this book, they discuss the power of defining moments short experiences that are both memorable and meaningful. The authors argue that these defining moments have one or more of these elements, elevation, pride, insight, and connection. Moments of elevation are experiences that rise above the routine, that make us feel engaged and joyful. Moments of pride commemorate people's achievements. Moments of insight deliver realizations and transformations. Moments of connection bond us together as a community. Members of the class of 2019, this is undoubtedly a defining moment in your life. Seniors, please stand. tassels from the right to the left. With the authority vested in me by the Woodstock Union High School Board of Directors, 
and the state of Vermont, I hereby certify that these students have met the requirements to earn a Woodstock Union High School Diploma. I certify them as graduates of Woodstock Union High School. Congratulations.